can't grade your own homework. You are the least able to really identify your problems, to find blind spots, to assume how adversarials will harm you. If you asked me how handsome, charismatic, and intelligent I am, you should never believe what I tell you. All organizations have untested assumptions, but they can't know them. And the first step for getting better is acknowledging you don't know them. But red teaming is strength, strengthens plans and processes, and it really improves morale and recruitment. I mean, those people who plan, assess, and conduct routine operations are the, simply the people you can't ask to verify uh, how successful it will be, to think through all the things that will go wrong. And that's what red teaming does. Simulations are ways to force organizations to think about contingency plans and roles and responsibilities before the disaster happens or before the scheduled event. I got to know the New York uh, Police Department Counterterrorism Bureau quite well. They run exercises about four or five a year, which bring every senior New York Police Department official, New York City official, transit bridge and tunnel authority to the bomb squad, to the detectives, to the mayor. And someone like me stands in front of them and starts announcing an upcoming event and everything that will go wrong. One of the ones I got to attend was for the New York City Marathon. And they said, OK, it's the starting line, the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, and a bunch of drones start circulating above the starting line. It looks dangerous. Who's responsible for that? And it's interesting because all these heads pivot. They had never had this discussion. They had never thought through these, these sort of simulations beforehand. If you direct people to think differently, it never works. That's what I do. And just one quick example of uh, how I did this recently to some impact. What we did was a series of exercises, one of which is called weighted anonymous feedback. Weighted anonymous feedback is where you have people write on a three by five card everything wrong that they see with this strategy. I then receive the cards and I shuffle them around and then I trade them back around to people and I say, I want you to grade these one to five. One, this is the worst idea. Five, this is the best idea. The problems that were in the strategy, they had never discussed. And the best um, problems that had been identified according to the composition of the group was from the most junior person in the room who had never spoke up or shared these concerns with anybody. I collected the cards, I handed to the CIO, I said, there's the truth. Right? This is what your team is not telling you. And uh, what you should do is actually look through these reasons they think it will fail and adjust your strategy. And the following day they did. As I said, it's, in, it's inherently impossible to grade your own homework. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to look at um, the problems you have and the biases that impact your judgments and decision makings. Nobody thinks differently when directed to do so, right? Nobody sits with a big notepad or makes a huge pot of coffee and suddenly thinks differently. That doesn't work that way. It turns out that the way we think differently, the way we come to new insights and ideas is in adjacent moments. It's not when you're focused narrowly on a problem, it's when you're adjacent to the problem. And that's really one of the most important ways to be a red teamer because you have to get out of your habitual practices because on your own, you won't see the problems and you won't see the solutions uh, effectively.